Hi guys, welcome back to OC Avery. Now, in episode 11 of the show today, you've got plenty of new arrivals that I need to introduce you to, and that's from several different species as well. We've got red poles, we've got siskins, and we've got green finches. You're gonna have to meet all of those guys today and see how they're getting on and actually what colours we've got, because we've got some very exciting news with a particular pair of red poles with those. We also have some more birds going back down to nest. So you're going to see those guys today they're going to be going back on eggs very soon, if not they are already. So we've got to see them and we're going to see the progress of them and actually how they're getting on. We do have some sad news as well, but we'll cover that later. And then finally, we have got some young birds that we've since separated from the parents from last week's episode, which are now weaned, and some more youngsters that have left the nest and even some that have moved outside into the new flights. So to begin each week, I start by making my egg food. Now this is a weekly thing because I only try and make up a week's worth. We put some in the freezer and we leave some fresh uh, and you know unfrozen and we give it to the birds throughout the week. We've got quite a few uh, little mouths to feed now at the moment. So you're gonna see them now, but let's get making some egg food. worth of egg food made up. Uh, there's about five kilo there. They get through pretty much, I'd, I'd say about 750 gram per day. Uh, I serve it up in pretty much one of these. Uh, the blue one, half, half full. And they, they get through that a day. Um, if you have not seen the video on my breeding egg food, then the link will be somewhere up here and uh, you can see my recipe for the egg food that I give to the birds during the breeding season. Now, beginning with a catch up with the canaries, this week we've had quite a few different developments um, and a few little changes with the canaries. So we're going to begin with our new colour pairs. Now, the first pair we're going to come to is our satinettes, our red-eyed satinettes. And we haven't bred any of those this year. The eggs have been clear, but what we have done and we've utilised their feeding abilities. So we've had them at a rear a nice nest of pied green finches and now sadly their eggs were clear and we did have some others underneath them and what they've actually been able to take for us was some uh, red pole siskin hybrids. The red pole siskin um, hybrid pair, sadly the hen came off the eggs and the eggs went cold. Now I was thankful that with, I found them probably within an hour of them uh, actually, you know, the hen coming off the nest so they'd just gone cold. I took the four eggs and put them underneath the hen and uh, at, at, at glancing now about three days after, it looks like that hen has saved those eggs. And we've got three which are full, so we'll talk about those later, but the hen is now going to be fostering some of those. The next hen we're gonna to come to is this yellow Dimorphic. She is on some red pole eggs. All six of those are full, they're due out next week. So really looking forward to those guys hatching as well. They're from a pair that we've already bred from, and they're, you know, they're, they're from the cockbird that is split for brown pastel. So we'll talk about those again in the red poll update. We then come to the next pair. We have a five hen who was originally with a five cock who split cinnamon. They have bred some youngsters this year. They reared three, they then reared a bullfinch and we've got th four of their youngsters actually being fostered by a different hen. They are now rebuilding, but what I've done is change the cock bird from the five cock into a green Norwich cock. Just because what I want to do, although crossbreeding canaries isn't advised, especially if you're looking to build a stud of competitive birds, what I decided to do was by adding the Norwich into that line, I want to use them um, and sort of utilize their feeding abilities and make them a slightly larger bird. The cock and the hen have been both brilliant feeders when breeding before. And I'm now hoping that we could put the Norwich in with that five, get some full eggs from them, get some chicks from them and actually get a little bit of a bigger canary we can utilize next year when we have some feeders for the green finches and the bull finches and any large mules or hybrids. Uh, you know, just using that to our advantage. So we'll have to see what comes out of them. That hen's building up no egg yet. 
We'll then come to the next pair. We've got a pair of fives. They have been fostering eggs. Last week we saw they had some red poles hatched. Now sadly the hen failed to feed and I think the reason being was because those chicks were so small she was really struggling to actually you know, feed them um, because of the beak. So what we did is we swapped the um, you, you know, sadly the youngsters died. I did try them under another hen, it failed. So we did put some uh, greenfinch eggs under her and uh, thankfully those greenfinch eggs, well, two were full and we've just had the first hatch today. We'll look at that in the greenfinch update. And then finally, we have a new colour cross hen. She has been, uh, you know, she was with a goldfinch cock. We had a full egg from them, uh, but sadly that failed to hatch. But what we do have now are four canary chicks that are just about to leave the nest. So hopefully you'll see that in next week's video. And uh, we've got in there a cinnamon, two clears and one uh, ticked like variegated bird. So now we're going to look at the red poles, we're going to talk about those guys. It's been an interesting week with these guys and we've got some excitement and some heartache. So like I said earlier, sadly we lost those four red pole chicks that hatched last week from our Isabel cock to our cinnamon hen. Um, uh, the, the, the hen failed to feed which was a canary, um, I did foster the eggs and sadly uh, nothing came from that. However, a bit of an update on that parent pair. They were in this cage and now because of the failed round um, and, and, and now a, a batch of eggs that she just failed to sit. I have since moved that pair to a different cage, which is a, a larger cage. So it's about three foot uh, long, good 12 inch deep and 12 inch to 14 inch high. It's perfect for them. I think a bit of a bigger cage might be more useful, gets the hen and the cock sort of away from each other when they need to. Um, and we'll see how they progress from there. So hopefully we get something from those guys. But the exciting news now, we've got more new arrivals with the red poles. So the first, we have four chicks, cinnamon chicks, from our world show se uh, second hen. Um, she she laid six eggs, she sat on all six, but we, as we've encountered before, she really doesn't rear well at all. Um, I don't know why, she just doesn't rear well. So what I've done is I've fostered those eggs and I put them under the hen, which is a cinnamon hen with the agate pastel cock. Sadly, their eggs were clear. So then what I've done is used her, because now she's had several clear rounds as a foster. All six hatched. Sadly, because I have it, six is a, you know, a, a rather large duty and with her being a current year hen, um, felt that it was probably not going to happen rearing all six but she's got four all four are doing well which is great now we move to our normal hen who is with a normal split fayo cock bird and this is where it gets even more exciting we've got some uh, we had some eggs from those guys we had five now sadly um two of them sort of stopped developing uh, you know just just dead in shell uh, around, around, you know a few days before hatching probably at, at day eight or nine but um we had several more than hatch we um now have two youngsters from those five eggs it's all right i've i've, I've not bred off that hen before even though she's a, a an over year bird and um well they're getting on well and a, a bit of an excitement with that so we've got one that came out as a normal a black eyed normal but then one came out red eyed and because I knew that the cock was split fayo and knew that there was a chance of the hen being split fayo and I saw this red eye uh, I had to sit down for a short while and think yeah oh my gosh have we actually got a fayo out now sadly it wasn't a fayo but you know I didn't expect that anyway and what we do have is a cinnamon in that nest so clearly the cock bird is split for cinnamon but the hen is rearing both of those youngsters as well hopefully I'm hoping I mean the cinnamon will definitely be a hen I'm hoping the normal will be a hen because what I'm kind of expecting hoping from that is that we'll get the fayo carrier cockbird next year to one of his daughters who could be split for fayo and if that is the case we might finally get some visual fayos out now just a bit of an update on the rest of the birds uh, on the red poles we've got the uh, cobalt hen with the normal cockbird who produces the brown pastels she is back on five or six eggs she reared five last round so let's hope that she does well this round we have the agate hen uh, agate split pastel hen who is with a normal split cinnamon split agate split isabel split pastel cockbird they are on another five eggs or six eggs um, 
doing well so that'd be nice she reared quite well last time she is a flighted bird and she's a, a very good mother so hopefully we'll get some more from them speaking of which she has got a uh, I can't tell you if it's a daughter or son, but we've had the youngsters that were being reared, which we saw last week, by the cobalt hen being fostered. They uh, have now fledged. We have two normals, which is from the cobalt hen to the uh, normal with a bit of pied cockbird. And then we actually have an agate, um, it's either a cock or a hen because of how we did the pairing from uh, that hen we just spoke about. So that's nice that we've got an agate color variant in as well. Um, could be a pastel, but I, I've not looked to be honest. It's quite young still, so not sure. We had the other cinnamon youngsters being reared by the agate hen as well. They are now fostered, sorry, they are now weaned. So we've got them feeding themselves, which is great. Really happy to see that. And then a bit of an update, we've also got a few cockbirds in here, which are sort of spare, not, um, yeah, they're not rearing. We've got uh, the youngsters weaned. We've got some more cockbirds in the other shed. And we do have a spare hen down here, um, who's, well, it turns out, I thought she was molting. She hadn't, she'd just been a bit uh, ragged about by the cockbird. Bird. so she's just replenishing her feathers but all, overall really good update on the red poles we've got six chicks now in the nest uh, you know very small we've got the hens on i believe five, 10 to 12 eggs and uh, more hens starting to go back down Last week we welcomed some more green finches. We had four youngsters hatch of five eggs. Uh, one of the eggs was clear, uh, it turns out, or sort of stopped developing really quite early on. Uh, but we had four youngsters. Now, sadly, one of them uh, we, we lost. Uh, the hen just, because of the age difference, we had some that were two days old by the time the youngest hatched. Um, there was nothing I could really have foster it even. Sadly, we lost that bird. Uh, but not to worry because hopefully we will be able to breed some more but what we do have is three from them uh, they are doing amazing they are currently six or seven days old and um, the, the size of them is is unreal um, I, I run these guys at only three days old I've been having them on a pre and probiotic and um, that yeah, that's in my egg food and they have grown really well so that's great and I'm pleased to report that those three are doing great and at now six or seven days old they've got the rings on and they are doing extraordinary so you know that's a great that's great that's from one pair my best pair of normals we'll then go to the pines we've got uh, an egg due uh, sadly only one of four eggs um, has actually it, all four developed from a pair of pines, but sadly only one is viable now. Uh, and I think that's, that's due any day. So we're probably gonna have that and foster that under the canary with the other pine chicks. Um, the other pair, which are building the freestanding nest, um, are still sort of building on that. So I'm going to see uh, what I can do and I might change the nest site if need be, because I do think she might be having problems actually building that freestanding nest. But we'll have to see, but overall with the green finches, we've got some more young out and uh, yeah, that, that's, that's really pleasing. So we've got, well, we've got a youngster in the nest, which is from a pair of pines we haven't bred uh, from yet. So that, that little chick in the nest with the fifes uh, is, is, does, you know, does not belong uh, to uh, a pair we've bred yet. And that, that's from a, another pair. So there's a chance that that could be an agate pied hen as well, because the cock is split agate. So fingers crossed all going well we'll get those guys up to the sticks and uh, we'll have some more exciting developments next week with our green finches so the siskins have been quite troubling uh, and painful this year because usually they would start to go down from even late april and then um, we've had a little bit of luck with them we did breed from one pair but sadly uh, the, the we have three dead in shell and one hatched and was failed to be fed um, but we do have good news this week we have finally got some young siskins in the nest that are being fed now this is from a pair that i bred from last year and um the the, the parent well the hen is doing great we've obviously separated the cockbird because it can be an issue we've got four youngsters from them uh, there's one left to uh, hatch still but that youngster is doing great so i'm really pleased to report that it's great to see that they are getting on well um, and hopefully we'll get some young siskins on the sticks 
and they can, um, you know, we'll, we'll see how they get on. And well, fingers crossed for the other pair. I've moved the other pair out of the little flight. They weren't doing anything. They weren't showing any interest in building. Now I did actually change the nest sites as well. And they just lost all interest for some reason. Uh, so what I've done is I've changed them. I've actually swapped them with the crossbills that we put in a four foot breeder. And we'll talk about that when we come to the mule hybrid pairs um, as to another reason why. But they're getting on quite well. I've put nest sites in there and they've already been inspecting them. So I'm thinking actually if we could cage breed some siskins this year, that'd be really nice and we'll see how, uh, you know, how it develops from next week. We'll see the young siskins next week as well, I hope and hopefully we'll see some developments from the other pair. So the bullfinches and the goldfinches, um, not much, much has happened over the past week, to be honest. Uh, the hens are looking to rebuild, but they currently haven't completed that. Um, they're both actually looking in the UPVC chapels that I got from Direct Bird Products. Um, but we do have the bullfinch hen sat now. Her eggs are due next week. All three are full. Um, she's been sat well, she has come off the nest a few times anyway as they do um, and I've seen her quite often actually having a bath because it's been quite warm up until today uh, and, and you know it has been like that but either way those guys are doing well hopefully we'll have some young bullfinches to see next week which would be nice and uh, overall a positive uh, result from, from these guys and just remember with these guys there is the chance of goldfinch bullfinch hybrids um, so let's hope one of those comes out. So just before we go and visit the new flights with the young birds, I want to talk about our mule and hybrid pairs because this week has been um, up and down with them, let's say. So we're gonna to come to the uh, goldfinch mule pairs first. We've got a Norwich hen, or we've got Norwich hens in with goldfinch cocks. On the top, we have a ticked buff Norwich hen and on the bottom we have a clear yellow Norwich hen um, and I believe both goldfinch cocks are yellow so we're going to do a bit of a different you know we're going to hopefully you know uh, I say this with let's hope that we get some youngsters from both pairs is that we'll get yellows and buffs and we'll see what comes from them now we have today got the first egg from this pair now they have already had two rounds which were clear um, but what I have since done is just changed it slightly, we removed the cockbird for a week or so, got him fit, got them on fertility vitamins, different nest site, and I'm ha kind of hoping that some full eggs will be in place. Uh, and another positive sign just from that is that I have seen the Norwich hen uh, sort of screaming to be fed by the Norwich cock, uh, by the goldfinch cock, and he has fed her. So which is a good sign of bonding, and I'm really kind of hoping that's going to be some goldfinch mules in uh, short Shortly. We've got the first egg from those guys today. For the top pair, I'm giving them a little bit longer just because the Norwich hen, whenever I put a nest site in, just seems to want to sit in it and not actually lay sometimes. Uh, we did get a second round offer with the Norwich cock and sadly they were clear because the Norwich cock, even though he was threading her, um, wasn't filling those eggs and that's why we've sort of changed it, we've put the golden cock in there. Now I'm uh, hopefully going to be getting some more nest pans soon, some deeper ones, so I'm going to put one of those in rather than an external one for that Norwich hen, kind of hope a bit of a change and uh, the, you know that the cock bird in there which is definitely going to fill eggs because the goldfinch cock has actually filled eggs with the canary hen previously, the different hen that it might get them full uh, this time so we'll see what happens fingers crossed for something from the mule pairs and then we come to our hybrid pairs how are they getting on and what sort of developments have we got well the uh, siskin red pole hybrid pair we had four eggs from and we saw them last week i set them on the saturday or sunday morning and we have three or four of four full now the hen was sat for about four or five days and then randomly came off the eggs and they went cold. Now, I, I couldn't bear to leave those eggs knowing that they were full and there was a, still a slight chance of saving them. So what I did is we put them under the pair of red-eyed satinet canaries and I'm thankful to say she has saved those eggs and I believe three of the four are full, but all are developing, uh, I think. So 
let's hope we might get some uh, red, Siskin Red Bull hybrids out again after we tragically lost the first round. I really hope there's some Cobalts in there because those were absolutely stunning, which we had from the first round. Now, then we come to our uh, Crossbill Greenfinch hybrid pair and uh, how they're getting on. Well, that hen, uh, since we moved them last week, which we saw, we moved them from a cage into a flight. Um, it made them click like that. And I think that's one of the biggest things that I've learned this year is uh, space. You need to make sure the birds have a large cage uh, or a flight because that is when you're going to probably get the best results and that's how they breed best. She has built up and she laid the fifth egg yesterday. I haven't candled them yet because she only began sitting about three days ago, but it's an egg from the, it's, you know, it's a nest from those guys. I really hope that crossbill cock has filled those eggs. Uh, you know, I, I'd love a uh, crossbow greenfinch hybrid. So, fingers crossed, we'll be candling them next week. Let's hope they're full and uh, we'll update you then. Now, beginning in flight five, we have got the red poles out. We've got the first five red poles that we had on the sticks out in the flights. Now, in here are three cobalts, a, a uh, brown pastel, and I believe what might be a normal pastel. It's a bit of a weird coloured chick that, um, but we'll compare it to some others and we'll see what you think we've got. But they're all doing well, all obviously feeding themselves and uh, I think having them in the flights is going to be really good for them uh, in the long term of getting them hardier. Coming to this flight, which is flight number four, we are storing in here some of the spare cock birds of the larger species. So actually in here we have a red palm mule, we have a uh, five canary cock who is split for cinnamon and we have a Norwich cock. The Norwich cock has failed to fill any eggs this year. The um, five, five has um, filled several eggs this year, he's done really well, we've just got quite a few youngsters from him. And the red palm mule might get his trance because I think he could be fertile with a, a, a new colour hen next round. So we'll see how they get on. In here we have our green finches from our normal pair, our best normal pair. We have three cocks and, th uh, sorry, two cocks, three hens. They're getting on really well now. Um, just beginning to molt these guys, I think. So they're on their bay cocks uh, for three or four days every two weeks and on vitamins also in here. We have the little Siberian bullfinch, which has joined them. Um, he was reared by the fives, being fostered by them after his mother left the nest. And he is getting on well, as you can see. Still not got the size on him yet, but don't worry, that's to come. Especially when they're young like this, uh, they do take a little bit longer to fill out. But especially as an adult bird, that's going to make a cracking bullfinch at home. So this flight contains our pied green finches. As you can see, these are all dark pieds. I believe actually the bird on the very right, um, now very left, is uh, actually just complete normal. But from uh, you know one pair, we've got five pieds and one uh, normal. So that's pretty good odds. Uh, they're all, you know, the, the five are dark pieds you have to take into account. So we'll probably be trying to put those to some white pieds next year, just or other dark pines just to try and keep the pineness in them, not let it go invisible. But they're getting on well again, same treatment for them. Uh, every three to four days, every two weeks, baycocks, and uh, of course, vitamins. And then in here, we have the rest of the canaries joined them, which we've since weaned. We've got, well, in here we have uh, five demorphics, three from the last round. We've got, uh, I believe actually, it's two hens. We've got a hen on the very left and a hen center. Uh, you can see they actually have a tail pulled out by the mother just before I weaned them, um, but not to worry. Uh, and then we have our, uh, a couple of five sitting in here as well. But overall, these guys are getting on well. Just vitamins for these guys. They, you know, they, they'll appreciate baycocks, but it's not, a, uh, it's not an absolute necessity. But those guys, the little young canaries, are getting on well.
So I'm afraid that does bring us to the end of this week's video, episode 11 of Breeding British Birds. I hope you've enjoyed it. I, I've tried a bit of a different style, um, sort of cutting it down a bit uh, for a bit of a shorter video for you guys, but with all the content that you get anyway. Um, I hope you have enjoyed it, found some useful tips, um, and just enjoyed seeing my birds, seeing how they're getting on. Um, I'll hopefully be able to do uh, pr probably even better videos shortly. It's just taking some practice um, and and uh, sh you know sh different things to show you guys. If you have enjoyed today's video, and you'd like to see more, please hit the like button and press subscribe down below so you don't miss any of my new content. So thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.